Ghosts of Tabor, VR's only FPS, PvP, and PvE survival game where you will use your wits, skills, and resources to survive. Uh, I took that straight from the Steam page. But seriously, if you haven't heard of Ghosts of Tabor or you're on the fence on whether you should finally make the decision to buy the game or not, then you've come to the right video. But first, let's just start off with some of the great things that Tabor is currently doing to stay on top of the VR industry in 2023. So Tabor essentially has the exact concept of Escape from Tarkov, which is a survival shooter where you loot, fight, and extract in order to survive. On top of this, you have an entire bunker to store all of your newfound goodies and eventually you'll work towards upgrading your bunker in various ways. Now although this progression hasn't yet been introduced to Tabor, it is coming in the future, it's been confirmed, but we have no idea how long it'll be until we can actually start upgrading our hideout. But in my opinion, the bunker system in Ghost of Tabor is infinitely times better than that of Tarkov. And that's because you're actually there, in virtual reality. So in Tarkov, you simply shift left click and all of your gear and your precious items moves right into your stash. This obviously works completely fine for a flat screen title. With Ghost of the board everything you find or purchase will be manually placed by you yourself on shelves and drawers cabinets etc and i think nothing can beat the feeling of having an organized bunker that you yourself put together from scratch or it can be like some people i'm not going to name the streamer uh, but they just dump all of their shit on the shelves on the floor in their kiosk you know whatever works for you but i think that's one of the amazing details that just makes this game so enjoyable to play over and over again now obviously Tabor is nowhere near the level of realism as tarkov but it's getting there the game's only been out for six months and in development for a little less than two years. And also keep in mind the dev team at Combat Waffle Studios is pretty small. Uh, but let's talk about the gameplay in general. VR gunplay has never felt better than Ghost of Tabor, at least in my opinion, and I love pretty much everything about the weapon handling in this game. It still has its kinks from time to time, but the game's only in early access, so bugs will always be expected. And since the game actually launched in March of 2023, about six and a half months ago, most of the terrible bugs have been completely fixed, and the game just keeps getting better patch by patch as it continues to evolve into a more polished VR shooter. Now I'm a and the game is perfect and there's no bugs whatsoever no absolutely not there are still a ton of bugs some of them even game breaking they might run into rendering issues or desync or the worst of them all is the game crashing especially when you just got so much good loot in one run and the game decides to crash and all that loot goes bye bye so it can be annoying but these are obviously bugs the team is always working to fix but just know that these bugs do exist and again it's in early access so these things are expected and back to the topic of the gameplay ever since this game first released on the steam page it instantly caught my eye and that's because it's escape from tarkov but vr it sounds fucking sick so i instantly bought the game and i was pretty much blown away from the immersion even though it was a complete bug fest half of the time and back to the present day i have over 400 hours in this game and i post three to four times a week on my youtube channel completely dedicated to this game and it just keeps getting better and better as the team continues to work on it so i really do see this game just staying on top of the vr industry for years to come i really hope it continues to advance because seriously no other vr game has the potential that ghost of the board does so as long as i don't mess anything up, I think this game will be around for a long time. So now let's talk about some of the reasons why Tabor is still nowhere close to perfect. One major thing that kind of went unnoticed by a lot of people was actually the optimization process that they had to go through in order to make the game playable on the Quest 2. But this isn't like the onward incident where they completely nuked the graphics of PC in order to make it run better on the Quest 2, because the game actually does have two completely separate builds from PC and Quest, and one looks a lot better than the other, obviously. But because the Quest was running so poorly when the game first came out, they had to optimize the levels a bit, which means they had to take out some of the vegetation, the item scatters, and just overall the level of detail kind of decreased, but not in a super noticeable way. The game still looks really nice, but some of the level of detail has slightly gone away. If you look at some old videos of the island of Tabor, for example, you can see there's just a lot more trees and bushes and a bunch of other items like that, which really did add to the life of the maps, but you gotta understand, nearly like 80% of the player base of this game is the quest too, so without the quest, this game would be almost completely dead. So it's a sacrifice worth taking for sure, but one of the big biggest downsides of the game currently is the crashing problem. So this game does like to crash, uh, typically at the worst times possible. You can go weeks without a single crash, and then all of a sudden, you might just lose everything that you just collected in your amazing raid, all because the game wants to crash. So the devs are obviously constantly working on this. They've done a pretty good job to combat some of the number one reasons for crashing on both platforms, but it still happens from time to time. But that being said, they are currently working on a system that will allow you to rejoin raids that you've disconnected from. And this obviously means that crashing won't be as much of a problem if you can just get right back in and not lose all of your shit. But besides bugs and crash issues, I have to say overall, Ghost of the Boar is my favorite VR game to date. And the future is looking very bright for this game, especially with every couple of months, massive new updates released for the game, which also comes with a complete wipe, meaning your bunker and shredder levels will completely be reset. And to some, this might sound extreme, but I promise this makes everything more fun when everyone starts from ground zero, especially with a bunch of new content to explore. 
everywhere. With that being said, the next massive update will introduce the new map, Matka Miest, the mother of all cities. And they also have tons of new implementations planned to make the game more interesting, like the John Wick DLC, gunsmithing, a player market, and even more ways to make money by mining cryptocurrencies or even growing some weed. So the CEO, Scott, has even said the game is basically a battle royale right now. You go in with your kit, you fight to the death, loot, and then you just leave. There's not really any survival elements in the game yet, other than the hunger system. With that being said, there's also not a ton of progression offered inside the game, other than just leveling up each item vendors in order to unlock more weapons and gear. The progression aspect is kind of lacking, even though they did just introduce a new XP leveling system. But as of now, the system is kind of pointless as it serves no purpose, other than the satisfaction of watching your level go up every time you complete a raid. But eventually, these levels will tie to certain things like the Never Wipe room, or also just other rooms around your hideout that you can unlock by reaching higher levels. But once this all comes in the future, the game will hopefully be a lot more fun to grind. Not that it isn't already fun to grind. Even just grabbing items from raids, selling, seeing how much money you can make, and seeing how full you can get your hideout to be is already super fun to begin with. So we just have to give them time for these things to be fully developed. And the team at Combo Awful Studios is working extremely hard to get this massive updates out on a reasonable time frame. So we just have to be patient. But even as a quote unquote battle royale game, this game is still insanely fun. And the features that are coming in the future will just make it 10 times better. But one of these features that is oddly controversial between the community is the weight system. But basically, if you come to raid with max kitted armor and a bunch of gear loaded into your backpack, you're basically just going to move slower and regenerate stamina a lot slower, which seems like a reasonable change because naked people should hypothetically be running faster than a fully kitted juggernaut. But a lot of the community still seems to think that this is the worst idea CWS has had yet, and they just don't want to see it in the game. Uh, I think it's a perfectly fine change to punish those who bring their best gear against less kitted players. And I think people are just over exaggerating it. But let me know what you think down below. But I think people just need to suck it up and understand that the game is going to have more realism elements implemented in the future because that's always been the vision for the game but anyways going back to the immersion side of this game being able to physically loot containers with your hands and then store all of your goods in your hideout or sell all your valuables that you find in raid it, it just feels so rewarding even though the game is lacking in that progression aspect so although it's a bore it does have its many flaws it's an early access vr title that has constantly kept me hooked into vr which i haven't seen from a vr game in a long time and i don't expect myself to ever stop playing this game in the future but back to the main topic of this video should you buy ghost of tabor i mean it's 20 dollars. it's like two meals at mcdonald's and you're getting such a good game for that price so yes you should if you're thinking about getting the game just buy it it's literally 20 dollars you can get all your friends to buy it too and you can run up some raids together it is also cross play between quest and pc so overall yes i do recommend this game one of the best vr titles to date and it's only been out for six months so we'll see where it goes but i hope this video did help you make up your mind or if you've already had ghost of tabor and you just stuck around to the end anyways then thank you for watching let's try and hit a thousand likes on this video that'd be pretty cool but check out all my links below i'll see you guys in the next video peace out